an awful song. No, it's not. Every one of her songs are awful. There's no. Not a single good the, one. I, I actually like some Britney songs. No. I do. No. Uh, do a mic check. Check, 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 check. No, okay. You're too low. Too low. Okay. Do, I do, do another mic check? Gonna do another mic check. Okay. How's it going? I think that'll be all. Good? Okay. Yeah, I think that'll be all right. <clears throat> How do I look? Pop. Check, check. Okay. Whatever. Whatever. We're we're all set. Yep. I guess. Uh, screw it. Whatever. Welcome to the Daily Cup of Genre, everyone. The show where we get to talk about everything in geek and, and entertainment news. Uh, it, on L LRMonline.com uh, and uh, LRM's U YouTube channel as well as LRM's uh, Genre, Genreverse Podcast Network, of course, brought to you by the good folks over at Grow, Grow Generation, where the pros do go to, go to grow more on them a little bit later. And uh, yeah, yeah, I'm Kyle M Malone. That's Christine Malone. And it was a uh, long, long week with two two episodes. <laughs> well, two, two now. Yeah. Um, we ha had the Go Ghostbusters re review on Monday. Mm. You guys think I I was harsh? You should see Red Red Letter Me Media's re review because well wow, um, it is what it, what it is though. Go go ahead and and check it out if you would if you would. Um, I was disappointed in the in the movie. Like that was the biggest feeling for me was disappointment. Like there's n nothing but nostalgia moments like images and names for ghost bu busters like yeah there's no t team element there's no uh 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 no uh style of of humor reminiscent of that their dry attempts really fall fall flat and their adult attempts of course are P pg-13 as hell mm, uh, they're, they're actually weird. like pg uh more, more than pg-13 they waste a bunch of k characters they do things that are out of character for some of the some of the old guys there's well, you know technical change, glitches so i mean do you, do you really think without spo spoiling any anything do you really think the guy on the on the phone wouldn't have believed the other guy when he said hey something big is is happening i mean think about it i don't know i i don't i don't for i don't see it fall, falling apart the way it's expo explained i don't know. In there. i i remember how i was as a, I'll, I'll, and I know it's it's different, like with with being a teenager, but you know, comparing, you know, that long in time, like I'm a very different person. No, I'm, so it's like, mm. but we're talking about two ad adults, not the kids. I know that. We're talking about but old old school go Ghostbusters that have already get... gone through go Ghostbusters one, go through go Ghostbusters two, two, yes, and then the explanation they give on why the go Ghostbusters are in the situation they're in. It doesn't make sense that they wouldn't have believed the store story. It just doesn't. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, you, I guess I'm trying to make excuses. I, I don't know. Exactly. I'll, I'll exactly. You're trying stop. to even reach back to. Well, I changed a lot when I was a kid to when I was a teenager. No, we're talking like forty year old men that have already fought a god, and all of a sudden they're gonna be like, "Oh, you think something bigger's coming? You're crazy." Don't shrug at me. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I'm. I'm asking. Like, does that does that make any in universe sense? Not really. <laughs> yeah. You know, so, so yeah, it, it it is what it is. But uh, it was just disappointing because I wanted a go Ghostbusters movie. Instead, I got straight a, a long episode of Stranger Things. I mean, that's what it is. It's a, it's it's t two kids, Finn Wolfhard and, and Eleven, but this time they're br brother and sister. Uh, no. uh, going out to to deal with with something that's above above their their pay grade, while all of the adults are, are idiots, right? If you want to make it that basic, then yeah. Okay, it's it's fine. I like strange Stranger Things. I but love Stranger Things is Stranger Things, right? And I love so. the Goonies and I love my Monster Squad. But and there goes your phone. Yeah, like I said, as a as an adult. adult I have more appreciation for, for Ghostbusters 1. I didn't expect it to be Ghostbusters 1, but I expected at least Ghostbusters 2. And, and, it and wasn't that's even the, that. And that's the thing. It was kind of like it was trying to be, but not. Because it's like, I, I didn't need Gozer again. Yeah. I didn't I didn't need uh, the Keymaster and Gatekeeper 
again. Like, to me, that was like, eh, you probably shouldn't have... Like, like, I like how they did it with the video game, mm-hmm. where it was like, like, continuation, but it's not... You know, it was new new baddie. I, I yeah. like I like how Shan, Shandor actually like uses the M- Mandela's and and becomes more powerful than Go- Gozer. Kill kills Go- Gozer off. You know, like Gozer failed me b- before, failed me twice. Screw screw them, right? And then because uh, he does bring, bring Gozer back um, in the video game there there towards the beginning of it, but uh, yeah, it was it was just d- disappoint. It's a competent m- movie. A lot of yeah. people love it for what it is. For what it is, it's it's not a Ghostbusters movie. <laughs> so, anyways, uh, to get off of Ghostbusters' ass, because you guys finally, yeah, f- finally, because you guys can definitely go ch- check out my my review. Red Red Letter Media d- does a, a good review, but th- they even say some things that I d- disagree with. Where I'm like, ah, I think you guys are, you know, off off the mark there. But you know. Uh, go go ahead and check all all that out. I, on the other hand, found a c- couple of Spider Man clips for us to to watch, and one of them uh, is actually a commercial <laughs> for Hyundai Hyundai. Uh, and I thought, why why not give it a, a chance? So you want to watch a couple Spider Man uh, c- clips? We got a com- commercial and then a a uh, TV spot released over in in Canada. So I'm pretty sure everywhere has got got it, but that's the uh, YouTube channel I found it on Sony Pictures Canada. Okay. All right, guys. So the, this is the Honda I Only Way Home commercial. Spider-Man, aka Peter Parker, is a criminal. That's why he's hiding. But it's time to clear my name. <laughs> Nice. I still love, love the move, moving eyes more than anything. Yeah, I know. You can't go anywhere. Is this funny? Ha <laughs> <laughs> ha. Happy? Or just some ran, random person? Ned? Oh, Ned! Hey, man. How'd you find me? My Ned sent me. Ned! <laughs> Ne- <laughs> I I like that. That's cute. That's yeah, it was cute. cute. Yeah, I I dug it. I dug that. That's a fun little little commercial. Uh, oh, let's see if there there's a little bit more. Anything else? No. You'll see. Doctor Doctor Strange. Okay, I like that. You know, product placement's one of those things that can get a bit bad rap. Mm. Uh, everyone loved to point to uh, uh, the Krispy Kreme stuff in the last I thought Power it was Rangers funny. Movie. I thought yeah. it was funny, too. But here's the fun- funniest thing. Uh, Krispy Kreme doesn't pay for ad- advertisement. Correct. They they don't. All right, yeah, I knew that. Ch- check us, guys. Like, I didn't know that before. If I found out about, about that, I always excused the... Uh, power rangers thing as if it was um uh like tongue tongue in cheek like they were doing it in movie on on purpose and they they were but i didn't know that there was a- absolutely no money involved so i actually it like made, it even more it made sense because you know then when i found out that they didn't advertise it's like you know what shit yeah i've never seen anything so and and i remember when you know they they got big mm-hmm. in Clarksville. Everyone was just like, oh, Dunkin' Donuts is, is garbage. I'm just like, it's fried bread with sugar on it. Uh, Not really, no. And, and then we, we discovered Duck Donuts here. Oh. You did. I'm not allowed to eat it. Oh, cake cake donuts, ma- maple maple icing with bacon on top. All right, anyways, TV, TV spot time. Let's do this. Yes. The starting to come through and I can't stop them. Well, you're thinking I'm about to do something that could break Who's coming through? All these people I didn't want to see. We need to send them back. You're not gonna take this away from me. Like arc re- reactor on him, and it mm-hmm. is the nanobots on Ock. Mm. I'm sorry, kid. Yeah, me too. Don't. There has to be another way. There isn't. Spider-Man. <laughs> I still don't like the idea of putting the the shield on on 
on uh, the Statue of Liberty. I like mm. the TV spot. Uh, good job, Sony, on not giving away too too much like you know normally do. Um, just a few more weeks for for that one, Christine. Yeah, I'm getting nervous. No, I'm getting nervous just because I. I don't don't know how it's going to land. I've been I, I think scared of this I'm, movie. I'm wondering if there's just going to be parts that I'm going to really enjoy, mm -hmm. and then you know parts that I don't. Kind of like the um, like with Star Wars, the the newer sequel trilogy. Yeah. Um, although I I will say, and and I don't know if this is an unpopular opinion. I haven't been doing any looking because I don't care to look at people's opinions because I'm just really not into. Not just your opinions, It's that's not the point. It's that it's, I'm not really interested in what's going on with Spider-Man very much. <laughs> I'm just not excited, but I'm tired of the love interest falling. Oh, yeah, well, um, you have you have to do do that. That's, no. that's Spy Spider-Man. I will it's say, I, I'll, I'll agree agree with that, um, and I'll, I'll bring up uh, that uh, they had already done a call back to Gwen's fall in home, Homecoming. With mm -hmm. Liz down the the elevator shaft in the uh, in the Washington Monument, so you you already did it. Do we have to do do but it? But it's again? not dramatic you, enough, you know. Uh, I don't know. That was pretty pretty dramatic, but you know, but everyone with, of course with romance involved. You, you know, well there was he was in into her and stuff. Oh yeah, that's yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. So they they do that. I'm sorry, I forgot about you. <laughs> they do that call callback all all re ready. You're right to do do it again. They do it with Mary Jane in the uh, first film with the uh, cable car, the Ro Roosevelt I Island cable car. I think think it is. Um and uh uh her falling and you know he saves her and and the cart and then you have Gwen's actual fall and death in uh, the Amazing Spider-Man two and then Liz in in Homecoming and now. Uh, MJ in uh, uh, no no way home. Yeah, it's like the Uncle Uncle Ben's story. You know, we've we've heard it. We didn't need to. I know everyone's like, oh, we needed to see it again. It's like Batman's parents being killed killed in the alley and pearls for fun. Do we need to see it? We all know. No, exactly. And I I agree agree with you. We don't need another fall scene. Yes. So then, not three, four. Yeah. Yeah. My bad. Yeah, anyway, it's all right. It's all good. Good. Uh, Either way, it's it's dumb. Yeah, I am. I I like what I see with with Ock though. Yeah, I I do, and I I have a feeling that he's not necessarily. I don't know because he's it's said that he's picked up after, um, after the the incident in the in the river, or at least that's that's what we're we're. Hear, hearing I, I i'm not sure what's what's official or, or not but um so it's like he knows he can control the the arms to a degree if he has that memory from the la last minute before uh he d died in the other u universe uh so so i'm wondering you know what what what's what's go going on with him? i don't think he's necessarily going to be a, a bad bad guy through through the whole th thing Hopefully, at the end, though, he does ri rise up to remain the goddamn but bad guy. Because fucking Disney, I, I know you guys love love your PG thir thirteen fa family friendly and and a anti hero stuff, but I like what uh what uh Ed Brubaker said about Uncanny X Men five hundred when I asked, you know, hey, Magneto's been this good guy for so long, why'd you decide to make him b bad again? Because Magneto is a bad guy. Doctor Octopus is a bad guy. Yes, I I need my bad guys to be get bad guys, and my he heroes to be heroes, and my anti heroes to have a very clear line of what makes them an anti hero. I I get mad of us all having to find good good stuff in the bad bad guys. Let let there be more Sephiroth. Let there be more classic pre prequel Vader where he's Some a people are just awful right where so, he's a b yeah. bad guy yeah. and in his re redemption it requires self fucking sacrifice not oh yeah. look at me I get to li live on and sell sell more to toys so 
Anyways, yeah. we have a guest uh, segment on here, and it was actually we're going to be traveling into the past where we traveled into the future for that guest segment. J- Jason Stewart, a c- comedian and actor. I do a good introduction for, for him, but uh, it was a fun s- segment. Unfortunately, our son had a bit of a, a breakdown down and uh, interrupted. Christine had to go t- take care of that. And we – kids. We go all over the place from his style style of comedy, talking about some, some upcoming shows. Very funny, very funny dude. Um, and uh, I don't know if it was a bit bit that he was doing in the inter- interview, or if he legitimately thought he wrote a uh, came up with a good jo- joke to to jot jot down. Regardless, yeah, um, he's mo- hilarious. Mo- yeah, mo- moments like that. I've made made jokes before where I'm like, damn man, I should write write that down and re- remember it in case I ever want to do do stand. Uh, of course, I never remember to write it down, but it's a fun interview, guys. I hope you check mm-hmm. check it out. Uh, yeah, and Jason, th- thank you one, once again, and uh, we'll talk to you guys on the uh, other side. You know what? Actually, I know I'm gonna have to add a cut there. We're gonna do our uh, ad break first, and then you'll see J- Jason's segment, and we'll see you on the other side of that. So, Grow Generation, take it away. Grow Generation, where the pros go to grow. For all of your cultivation needs, Grow Generation has the right products, service and staff to make your grow successful. Go to www.growgeneration.com, where the pros go to grow. Oh, and there he is, Mr. Jason Stewart. How's it going? Fine, how are you guys? Good. I'm doing outstanding. Thank you so much for asking, Jason. Welcome to the Daily uh, Cup of Genre, the... uh, LRM Online's uh, Genreverse Podcast Network's variety show, if you will. We cover every everything here, man. man and I am super excited to have you on the on the show. Uh, stand-up co- comedian, uh, actor, pr- producer, d- director. You do a whole bunch of stuff. Over 150 film credits, TV credits, a stand-up thing, thing coming up on uh, January 8th at the Desert Rose uh, Playhouse, as well as a, a show that you're doing uh, December 3rd at the Comedy Chateau. Yes, God, you're really on it. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> um, I'm Kyle. This is my my uh, wife, Christine. And, uh, dude, you got this headline thing coming up on, on January 8th. You got the thing at the Comedy Chateau. Tell us a little a bit about that so you can plug the things that you got going up before we can get in, into the weird questions. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Um, the show is going to be about, I guess, what it's like to live next door to my mom. Uh, my mom is 84 and still shops at Forever 71. <laughs> it's great. And I actually, uh, two years ago, moved to Palm Springs. And I live here around 80% of the time when I'm not in L.A. working. And uh, we live in this uh, sort of fourplex. And I'm up here. And then she's downstairs here. It's like, you know, loser. That's what it says. Loser. <laughs> you know, I, it, it's all about me living next door to her, you know. And uh, I guess I'm now a spinster. And people walk by and go say things like, oh, that's Jason Stewart. He never found anyone. He's alone. Aww. <laughs> right? Aww. And then people throw balls on my grass and stuff. I keep it now because that's who I am. <laughs> and if they're over 21, they get to stay. i like i like that that's that's good man i i tell you tell you what i'm we're both huge huge fans of of stand up it's one of the um great joy joys in life to just be able to laugh and i know a lot of uh comedians that uh have either i've spoken to to a couple and then um uh you hear hear it all often making people laugh has got to be incredibly uh rewarding especially over the last couple of years um so thank thank you for helping us laugh your oh, wow. your That's style sweet. of comedy is very funny i appreciate it <laughs> well somebody wrote somewhere if joan rivers and uh don rickles would have a child it would be me <laughs> <laughs> you know i have a an unfortunate and for fortunate name kyle uh, my wife didn't know all the j- jokes about my my name even going back to george carlin um <laughs> And so I've been I've been uh, in into that as as uh, as long long as I I can remember. What's the jokes um, about your name? I never heard any jokes about oh, Kyle. Oh, Kyles are assholes. <laughs> oh, are they? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, you two uh, were on the internet quite a bit. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, um, I I go on to work and then I I try to be in real life. 
Yeah. I, I want to meet some real people and actually talk to them. The other day I called someone on the phone, this young guy, and I asked him to come and uh, hang up a TV or something. And he said, oh, you're calling me. I said, yes. He said, oh, I see. He said, uh, most people text. I said, well, I don't know you. How am I going to? And he goes, oh, okay. Uh, and he, he didn't know what to do. He could barely speak the poor thing. Mm. And then he came to the house. It was very difficult for him to look up from the phone. And I said, when I was a kid, we had this thing that used to hang on the wall and it had a cord. And he goes, what's a cord? <laughs> yeah. It's a cord, you know, and we would walk around and my mother would be on the, the cord and the phone. Hey, you kids, stop that shit. You know, <laughs> yeah. yeah. I used That's to, my used bra. To get that. Take it off your head. You know. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, um, the dude talking about f phones. I'm. We're both uh, the same way, and uh, That's a we're great both thing. In, I'm going to write that down. It, it is. <laughs> I like. I like that. That one. Um, you using using te technology like we're d doing this z Zoom call call for for interview right right now, man. It's it's weird. I'm I'm st stuck in that mid, you know, born in the uh, mid mid eighties, so I'm, I'm cl close close to forty, and I'm I'm stuck in between X and and m millennials. My sister, on the other other hand, hundred percent. Don't don't call me. Text. I'm, I don't want to text you. I got a whole par paragraph. I don't want to do do that. I want to talk. A lot of work. Yeah. So I you leave a message that. and if they want to text back, I don't text someone unless I know them well, because I think it's too easy to misunderstand. My partner, yeah. and not my romantic partner, but my uh, writing acting partner on my series Smothered, Mitch Hera, loves to text all day long, just these feelings. And I never know what he's talking about half the time. And he misspells things or writes the wrong word or gets the name wrong. And and then he'll then he'll say things like, "Oh, you don't really read what I'm doing, you know." I, but it's over a three hour time. I'm actually doing something else that doesn't involve you. Mm. No. <laughs> yeah. Um, I kind of wanted to ask a bit about the the last uh, eighteen months, and sometimes I'll always I'm a big fan of the things that go on behind the scene scenes. I love the the different hats besides. Uh, what what goes in front of, front of the camera? So d directing and producing and all, all of that. Uh, so all the guests we've kind of the, done the, the cliche thing about asking what it's been like working on things like your your show, your your craft, and and both in front and behind the scenes during these la last eighteen months. What what's that been like for for you? Um, I think it's been scary. It's been creative. It's been um, sad. It's been um, uh, a nice time to sort of reset and think about what I'm doing with my life. I keep thinking that I want to write a piece about getting older and about bias and about the way people treat people of age with a certain bias. And it's sort of hard to understand until you get there, until someone decides that you're, oh, you're that person who's older. You, you're not a part of this group anymore. You're not a part of this mainstream thing. And then being a gay person or a Jewish person, I've always been sort of off to the side. No, you know, oh, there's my, I, I forgot to shut off my. Uh, That's okay. It's fine. I was making sure it wasn't mine. <laughs> email. Um, Cause I had to bring it up to zoom you. So the idea of biased and, and the, and people, you know, my black friends and my women friends, have really taught me about bias and about privilege. And I certainly know that I, being a white man, have privilege. You know, my friend Alila, who's black, said to me, the difference between you and I is that when you walk into an audition, they get to reject you inside the room, whereas I'm mm -hmm. rejected before I even get there. Oh. And I thought, ooh, that's interesting. And which is better, I don't know. I would guess getting in the room is better because you can change minds and hearts. But there's, mm -hmm. a, there's a certain bias on someone who is famous or known for being gay than there is for someone who is straight. I was at an award show where Tom Hanks was getting an award for being the everyman. Now, I love Tom Hanks. Yeah, I'm of a course. Hanks fan. He has played everything from a gay man to an astronaut to a southerner to an army sergeant to a, you know, a special needs guy to, an, you know, everything to a criminal and he gets to do all that where, you know, other people are not an every man. Now, why is not Whoopi Goldberg and an every woman? Why is Angeline Jolie always the love interest? 
why is you know why is that why are we all assigned that hollywood or um the internet tells us what's attractive and what's beautiful and what's you know where where we should stand in life mm -hmm. and it is changing it is changing very much you know but um absolutely but there's still yeah. this there's still a a um a, a, a privilege to that for certain people uh, you'll hear yeah. casting directors always say well i cast the best person for the role i don't think so i think is the best person that fits into this bias and this idea of who they think this person should be yeah stories of, uh, and also who and then, and then then when you get representation it's the person who believes that you are the one that can make money and they don't believe that you can make money unless you're like another kind of person i've, I've always as as weird, weird as it sounds because again again being in, interested in that that um uh, but behind the scenes thing, when it comes to represent, representation, you you do have the those that are tr truly trying to do uh, uh, good good things in in the studio net networks, and then you have those trying to make sure they they make m money, check check a box, uh, this that and the the other. It's always interesting to hear people that aren't you know st straight white white dude, dude uh, get to talk about the those in interactions and. You were talking about um, uh, how. So sorry, my I have a brain injury, and sometimes my it dumps out everything. But you were m mentioning um, the joke about the the one one percent in one of your your uh, uh, bits, and how you. Oh, done, I, done them I read all. the paper the other day that only one percent of the country is gay, and if that's true, I've slept with everyone. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, you were w wondering about like uh, the. Up and coming because, like you said, hum humans yeah. are humans are gar garbage. So there's always work to to be be done. But, exactly. But yeah. Go, so go um, yeah, I was just wondering the um, as as far as like the um, uh, what was my question? The up and coming co comedians. Yeah, like when. The... Yeah, like you you've seen more of it. You've seen more representation. Um, but what's we... interesting is you see you see people coming up, and some of them are incredibly talented. It's not about that, but then you see, oh, that's interesting. So there's two guys that are gay comedians that have come up recently. Both of them have killer muscle bodies. Mm -hmm. and I think to myself, wow. So in our, in our, um, those are the ones that have been able to get on television a bit and also become, and I, and I think that's interesting because the comedians used to be where the funny people could be. You didn't have to be good looking. And now you have to be good looking to be a comedian of sorts. You know, it, certainly there's, uh, it's not all one thing, but it's just interesting that that's the way it has. And for gay men, you know, they've all, you know, people, we're the only group of people and it's not all, and it has gotten better, but we're the only group of people that, that don't support each other in the same way that you wouldn't see Barbara Streisand hosting the BET Awards, but you would see Kathy Griffin hosting a gay award show. So mm. you wouldn't see, you know, uh, uh, Denzel Washington hosting, you know, Asian American Awards. <laughs> you know, right, or, right. But as gay men, we do that all the time. We put women on a pedestal and we put them before ourselves. That's so, so interesting. Whether it be, to, you to know, hear that. from Streisand to, Diana Ross to, you know, Ariana Grande to Cardi B, you know, so yeah. whereas it's a very interesting other other groups don't do that in the same yeah. way. So it, it, it presents another problem. And I always my first comedy CD was called uh, Gay Comedy Without a Dress. Mm -hmm. And because there had been very few comedians that were male who had done comedy without being in drag or being an actual woman that were successful. And it's still been, it's still been a, it's still a, uh, a, a process. It's still, though it has gotten better. I do yeah. think it has gotten better, you know, but they yeah, like get I older know. and then they say you're too old. They don't say it, but they treat yeah. you, they treat uh, you. Never, better. never too old. Keep, keep going, you know? Uh, <laughs> But and, yeah, that that ha go, go ahead. Yeah, I was I was gonna say because it's like every every generation has a little something to give, and I I would love to see you keep going. Um, I think you are hilarious, and I I love your work. 
That's very kind. Thank you. Yeah. Um, well, you know, one one of the th things that I I do like to to do here on the on the da daily cog is work in in seg segments and uh, go to kind of break the for fourth wall here and let let everyone know that we're going to be releasing this after after they Thanksgiving. We're secretly re recording in the past, lady ladies and gentlemen. But we do a cool thing called Friday frights, and the only reason I bring the, this up is this going to be on Friday? Is yes, Friday? absolutely. So it is Friday now. Yes, it's Friday. Oh my Friday. God, what happened Friday? <laughs> that j just, just like hold like, on, hold uh, on, it's like bewitched. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. There, there, there you yeah. go. Da -da, I, I, da -da, what was, uh... da -da, da -da, da -da. <laughs> that is the gayest show on television. So oh, gay. And Dora, oh, gay. More than Dr. Uh... Mumbai, seem gay. Paul Lynn, gay. Both, uh, you know, Dick Sargent, gay. <laughs> what about uh, I, I dream of Jeannie? Um, I don't know. Yeah, that that one. Yeah, there, not there you asking, go. Oh. But, but I think that the people on Bewitched were angry about it because mm. I think they copied their show. Though it was a fun mm. show, but I think they did, and they did copy the show. But why? Yeah. What, why was she in that bottle? If she was, if she had all those powers, why didn't she just go like this and get out? <laughs> you, you, uh, what, what was it? Uh, uh, Aladdin, Grand Cosmic uh, Powers, itty, itty bitty living, living space. Yeah. Or, uh, late Ro Robin Williams, uh, genie bit in that that movie, um, but. The the reason why I bring it up is Friday we like to uh, to talk horror every every now and then and I saw you had horror? a couple about of horror? horror yeah horror oh, horror is not about horror. horror no not about oh. horror. no we're not talking about horror no we can oh. do that la later if I've got, got some a couple good horror, horror yeah there, there you go yeah I was gonna say I saw some uh, uh, titles that were definitely in the horror maybe even th thr thriller genre thriller a lot yeah mm -hmm. and one one of the things I've found and uh, it's it's been for for a while but. Uh, uh, Jordan Peele and Danny McBride have kind of brought to light comedians doing hor horror, right? I would so, love to do that stuff with them. God, I would oh, love yeah, cool. that. There's the question, man. Like, what yeah, are what's your, your favorite? What I want you know what I want to do. I want to play do? that old guy that that's that, that that works at the store, you know, and that, when they come into town, what you kids doing here? Right? Yeah, that that ominous want, feeling. Yeah, cool. Want, want you kids go home now? The harbinger, there's yeah, nothing, cabin there's in the woods. Nothing hair for you, Kyle. <laughs> yeah. you, take I love that, it. you take that little girl with you and get out of here, because you know I'm gonna get you. <laughs> <laughs> what What's your favorite horror m movie, man? Like, what's your uh, go, go to? Well, Get Out for? certainly is one of my favorites. Nice. Uh, the really Exorcist, Cla classic. Uh, I saw that way too, way too young, like seven eight eight years old House of wax when i was a kid with vincent price mm. oh cool Classic. um oh god so many you know i did a film last year or it came out last year called immortal which is mm -hmm. part of a science fiction thriller it's really good and it's these four segments about these four different people that just won't die and i'm in the fourth segment with um a sam levine from freaks and geeks and i play this um guy who's uh joe who's a private investigator that deals with spyware is really one of my favorite performances that i've done very cool. cool i have to i saw it on the on the lit list and it was one of the on, ones that uh, caught, it's caught on my eye amazon almost everything is on it got i had like four movies come out last year on amazon mm -hmm. one on showtime if you like action films i did a film called abducted mm -hmm. and then i have my series smothered which is about two guys who have been in a relationship for 30 or 40 years who hate each other but can't afford to get divorced with my co-writer and co-star, yeah. Mitch Harris. I saw that one. And you can uh, watch that on Amazon, but it's also on Apple TV and YouTube, and you just go to smotheredtv.com. And it's very funny, and we're pre-production now on the uh, season two. We've written, uh, it's a short form series, so there's seven short episodes, but this season will have nine short episodes. Very cool. Love it. Um, one of our uh, one of the big like you know classic de debates in in the horror genres always goes goes back to those you know big cl classic three the uh, for Freddy, Jason, and, and Michael. But I t tell you what, as as a as one of those we weird people in in between, I'm I'm sick and tired of Ghostface Killer not not getting his due. Scream was a phenomenal movie and and many people want to call it like a a modern classic or no man man that is just a a straight up classic 
But once again, they're coming out with a movie called Scream, Scream which is technically Scream 5. Tell me why can't people get na naming convention right? <laughs> How, what do you, who is your like favorite uh, 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 slasher, if you ha have one? Well, Anthony Perkins, Psycho. There's no one better <laughs> than him. There you go. I like that, that, that deep cut no right there. That film. And then um, The Birds, was those mm. two films were just, oh, my God. It was, you know, the, the birds is just a brilliant performance by Rod St Taylor and Rod Taylor, right? And Tippi Hedren and Jessica Tandy and uh, Angela Cartwright. Loved, loved, was it Angela or is it? I am ch checking uh, uh, right right now. I, I am the B birds. <laughs> Angela, I think it's Angela. Let's see. He said t Tippi got a... Uh... Rod Taylor, Tippi Hedren, Jessica T Tandy, Suzanne, Flash it, Veronica C Cartwright. Oh, Veronica, okay. Yep, Veronica. Yep, Sorry. there we go. <laughs> yeah. And um, then also, I, though, I don't know, I was on Goliath this season. Mm -hmm. In October, it came down. Uh, the Billy Bob Thornton series, I was opposite J.K. Simmons. I had a scene in that. And that is sort of a thriller of sorts. It's a, I guess, Steve, David E. Kelly series. It was the last mm -hmm. season. I guess sort of yeah I think that thriller uh S Simmons and and uh Bruce Dern I, just... I got to work with Bruce Dern I mean god it doesn't get better than that Black Sunday uh, yeah Nebraska coming home they shoot horses don't they you know the hateful eight I just I mean Such a... so jealous <laughs> I'm jealous too. I wish I, you know, these things I have, you know, they, I've only worked one day on it, but I, you know, that's the hardest thing being an actor is not, you want to come back and be a part of the party, mm -hmm. you know, and you want to, and that, that's what I was talking about before. It's about when uh, talent meets opportunity and opportunity, you know, I, I, that's what I thought in the last two years is about bias so much and how I've uh, blamed myself. I think over the years, I, there's so much, you know, I was talking with my mom who lives next door. And, um, <laughs> That's gotta be rough sometimes. We've had, we've had some incredible, no, it's really been great. Mm. We've had some incredible conversation. I said, mom, what was it like having a gay kid grow up in the seventies? What was it like, you know? And, and she said, I said, don't hold back. Don't try to be nice to me. Don't be, she said it was awful. She said, and she said it was humiliating. It was scary. We were afraid for you. We didn't know. It was uncomfortable. It was um, shameful, you know, and all these things. Of course, she said, I don't feel like that now. But at that time, right. they had never had, we, there was never, there was no gay people in my family except me. So there was this idea that I was going to have this awful limited life. And in some respect, it was hard. And, it, you know, I, I went into a business that would have rather had me been, a, you know, a hairdresser or a makeup man yeah. rather than in front of the camera. And I see myself as a character actor. I see myself playing both gay and straight roles. And when I mm -hmm. did Birth of a Nation five years ago, people were just like shocked that I could play a plantation owner in 1831. And I had a really nice part. And it's interesting um, that experience changed me. It really taught me, you know, that all the things that I had thought about myself. And then I did a film called Hank, a little one. I did, I did like 30 projects after that. Everything from tiny little short films to guesting on Love for, you know, uh, Judd Apatow and working with Keanu Reeves on Swedish Sticks and all these wonderful people that I got to work with. And then everything sort of stopped in the pandemic. And you think to yourself, you know, where... Do you stand? Will I be able to get back in line? Um, how will people uh, treat my um, body of work? Will they, you know, am I treated the same way a straight person is? I don't think so. I don't feel that. And that's something that I struggle with in, in my life and causes me a, a bit of depression at times. And, it, you know, the, that you work so hard and at the same time, how do you not go, oh, sour grapes, you know? Because mm -hmm. there's a lot of people in our business that um, 
you know, got famous for doing one thing and they, they just never changed, didn't want to change and wanted to continue doing the same thing. And I've never done that. I've always changed. And I've always tried, you know, I don't, I'm not the same actor who, um, you know, did my wife and kids uh, literally 20 years ago. Played Dr. Mm -hmm. Oh, that shows that long yeah. ago. Wow. Same guy. And I think that I've grown and changed and I've stepped up. So you think, how do you, how do you go about living your life, going for your dreams, wondering where you belong and all of this? I don't really quite know because I'm in that, my stand special was called Make it, Making It to the Middle 15 years ago. So I don't, or 14 years ago. So I don't know what, um, you know, I don't know where I fit in sometimes. Wow. It's, it's good that you're um, someone who can change because that's so important. Someone just staying so. still and, and just being stagnant won't get you anywhere. So you already have the right mindset. So I, I think that, that you will continue on, and I look forward to seeing other things that you are going to be doing. Well, I remember when Lucille Ball came back to television and did a series in, in, in called Life with Lucy in the 80s, I think it was. And, you know, she's trying to do the Platt Falls and the, play the Lucy character in her 70s, and it was just... It was like, oh, she's going to break a hip, <laughs> you know, if she falls off that ladder. It was just Harrison Ford and Indy, <laughs> Indy five. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. You know, it was a different thing, though, when you saw Skyfall and you saw Judy Dench and all these incredible wow. people running around. So it, it, it's just how you do something like in England, they let people age and they respect that here. They don't. Yeah, de de definitely. That's true. Yeah. And it's it's weird uh talking about about that because every every generate generation cur curses the one b before it and the one one after it and most of the time rightly so for di different different reasons like i said humans we we, we fucking suck sometimes yeah, we, we but, fail sometimes but yeah. it's that flexibility and and that willingness to, to grow and that ability to hear that voice in the in the back that's like don't take the e easy way out don't be lazy put put some effort in into it because uh, otherwise we wouldn't have any kids because those things are annoying <laughs> <laughs> you have kids i have, we have, we one. have one yes oh, i can't have kids i have nice furniture i just can't <laughs> That is a perfect reason not to. Our house has more uh, uh, more holes in the dr Little. drywall from Lucas than Kyle, and that's a that's a me meme. I'm Kyle's always afraid I'm going to get a kid I don't like. What do I do? What do I do? <laughs> you know, I, this, I'm sorry to bring it back to the clerk and go. I'm sorry. This is just not working out. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I don't want store credit, but thank you. And you can't you can't really put it back. I think. Speaking of our kid, I think he might be at the do door, Chris. How old is he? Um, he is eight years old and he is awesome. He's uh, been getting into uh, gaming more and more, which is a lot of, no, don't a lot of fun. No. no, but it's, no, it's well, very lucrative. I hate to, I, I'm teasing, but it's incredibly yeah. lucrative. Oh, it, it is. Uh, we, we, of course, are uh, limited on what he do does. There's uh, one g game that he plays online only when I'm there to, to play with, with him. And it's a cartoony first person shooter called Team, Team Fortress. It's what, shooter? it's what, uh, where people, what's that? Where people get shot? It's yeah, it it is. And but he it's dominates adults. Cartoony. It's funny. Uh, it's actually what uh, that Fortnite game stole most of its uh, stuff from. I and then he plays. Problem. I have a problem with all that because. Oh, I'm sorry. No, don't be sorry because the idea of people getting shot so much mm. late, the thing that yeah. happened with Kyle Woodenhouse, where people mm -hmm. feel that they can take. The, the law into their own hands and say, I don't like what's going on. Go in there, bring a gun, hit, have his mother at 17, drop him off with a, you know, this large assault rifle mm. and kill two people and cripple another person for life. And that being okay. And that's insane. Uh, I mean, defense. it's just insanity. And I do think yeah. these games and these movies, and I hate to say it, but they, we put such, you know, everybody wants to be in a superhero movie. It means more than anything. All the money is spent on them. All the produce, all the um, uh, the publicity is spent on them more than any other movie. Yeah. And I think when you present something to someone and you say, "Hey, this is this is great. Here's 
here is Avengers 62 and it's and the, and the ad is this big and then you go here's the movie the humans and it's just this tiny here's the humans it's this tiny little you know film yeah. they don't release things and they don't give it the same credence whereas mm -hmm. you know it used to be the other way around like in the 70s you'd have these great movies that were released by the studios and now they don't do it now it's all indie or gone to you know, gone like the humans is coming out today. It's, mm -hmm. it's it's a play that was about um it was about it's about a family, uh, it's I think it's about Thanksgiving. And uh it's it's a it's a, a this would have been done, you know, thirty years ago or forty or whenever the seventies was, it would have been released as a studio picture with great yeah. publicity, but now it's being released on Showtime and you know, and that's great that it's there and more people will probably see it, but it is interesting the way, that's what I was talking about, the way things are presented and how you are treated and how you mm -hmm. are presented to somebody and who represents you and what, and what is in life represents things that I've been thinking about lately and mm -hmm. why I feel the way I feel. Absolutely. And, and every, everybody's, uh, uh, different in the way that they're, they're exposed to, to things. There's, um, something i had to go go through after uh my my deployment i was in in the ar army uh for 17 years and i did wow. iraq once and thank Af afghanistan twice. Thank oh you. Th thank you um i had to do something called exposure therapy to kind of process some of the th things that i had gone through uh -huh. and uh one of those uh one of the aspects of that of course is re purposefully re reliving trauma and exposing your yourself to to things again and again to, to show hey you made it you you survived and and uh programming kind of reprogram your your brain on how it deals uh deals with that trauma how and how did you do that did you do it uh so, so what what uh in in session that uh so there's only certain things you can it, physically expose yourself to but in session they'll ask you to go over uh, a memory and an event and you'll de describe it and then they'll say, okay, well, what are the smells? So you have to go, go back and reach. Oh, so it's a sense of memory, and, like in an acting class. Yes. Very, 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 very similar. And, um, one, one of the things that, uh, are combined in that is another type of, uh, therapy, uh, uh, be, uh I can't remember that acronym, but, uh, the way that you can, uh, expose kids to, to things and sh showing the d differences between, uh, Re reality and make make believe whether it's you know a su superhero movie of a violent game or even something super fantastical like Harry Harry Potter is all very important but um you're absolutely right that if you don't have the right guidance and all you're fed is certain I images you don't have that touchstone to to go back to help keep uh keep you uh grounded well it doesn't but, mean anything at times that's what happens mm -hmm. it doesn't mean the same thing when the kids go on these games and they shoot people and they die it doesn't mean the same thing right mm -hmm. without some, something to go back yeah and it's so important for absolutely. people to to teach their kids you know but how you know, not to be that? afraid of all that it's so out of your control isn't it Mm -hmm. Not, not really. I get my so my dad was also our army, and I can tell you the first movie I can remember watching is Hamburger Hill. Do you know that that one by chance? Oh, of course, Dylan McDermott made him a star. There, there you go. That is my er earliest move, movie memory. Sitting in a an apartment in uh, uh, Tacoma, Washington. Uh, my sister wasn't even born yet, so this is eighty eight. I'm four four ish. And my dad, being the infantry gung ho eighties uh, war monger, he was. It's all all good. Um, it was uh, it was fun because he always was t telling me, you know, this is this is fa fantasy. This is uh, you know, historical fiction, if you if you will, and this is uh, re reality. And so I I've tried to keep that, and not just with of violence, even fan fantastical elements, things dealing, dealing with magic and superheroes. It's humans can't do that, but buddy, you know, this is, this is, this is fa fantasy. You can't jump off of a, a building and, and sur survive. Um, so yeah, but one of the things. want to. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, if yeah, I remember jump, jump watching off. one of the <laughs> Iron Man with Gwyneth Paltrow and she kept jumping around in high heels and i thought god god her back is just going to be terrible when she's my age 
Yeah. You know, I guess one last qu- question to kind of touch back to what you're t- talking about with uh, m- movies. On Mondays, I always bring up box office numbers. It's one of my passions because I love theaters. I love being with people and seeing a mo- movie. I miss going to uh, comedies. Like you said, there's only this superhero movies or your G- Ghostbusters, Star-, Star Wars in the th- theaters now. And I miss laughing at a at a, a J- Jim Carrey or Adam San- Sandler movie. I miss going and watching a good, good dra- drama drama like um uh, six cents so i saw with my my dad in theaters and that doesn't happen as much anymore but like you you said hey things are on on digital and christine you could go ahead i'll i'll wrap wrap up with jason sorry, sorry. about about this everyone and in, where's he going where's he going uh to take care of our son he's at the door, door again oh um <laughs> yeah and i just lost oh so like you said about the di- digital thing offering uh more people to get exposed to th- things but like you said they're they're not getting that theater ex- experience um what's your what's your is the the digital platform and sh- streaming access is it worth lo- losing what we what we seem t- to be losing in theaters well i you know i have mixed feelings about it because I like you, I do like to watch things at home. I, I do like that and I'm looking forward, but today I'm gonna to go see, you know, uh, the the film, um, uh, The Power of the Dog with mm. Kirsten, Kirsten Dunst. It's a film that Jane Champion directed. I'm gonna go see that at 2, 15. Is that the one where she's like at a farm? Far, I, th- yeah, yeah, I, yeah, I heard it, yeah, okay. I heard it, and I heard that she's great in Cumberland, uh, Bennett Cumberland, Cumberland, uh, Cumberbatch. Uh, Cumberbatch. <laughs> I was invited to the Oscar content. Oh God, why is this happening? It's okay. I, I was invited to the to this um, uh, contenders thing for people who vote for the award shows, and uh, so I was really excited about that. And I was hearing about all these movies, and this movie made me want to go see it. I, you know, but I and then I, I, you know this is gonna. I saw uh, King Richard already, and I also saw. Uh, tick tick boom. Okay, I've been, Andrew Garfield's I've been, latest. My famous, yeah, it's my favorite uh, time of the year when you see all the really good movies. So, um, I just, I love all this. I, I'm, I, you know, the only sadness about it for me is I wish I was in one of them. <laughs> I can, I can un- understand that. Yeah. yeah, I really wish I was in one of them, but um, it's so, it's so hard right now because people have not worked and. You know, everybody is doing uh, everything. I mean, there's yeah. no the per- person who would do my role would be someone who would you know have been on a series or something. Now they're taking the one day guest stars and the you know supporting roles and in movies and it's just it's a strange time. That's why we don't know what's going on. But this is my favorite time of the year going to the movies. But um, I forgot what the question was. <laughs> So just a- asking what, whether or not what we're what people are get gaining in in content exposure on, on yes, you're getting to see more. Yes, theaters. it is, yeah. and our TVs have gotten bigger. Yeah, and, that's, uh, true. that's you know, true. So we're doing that, and some of the movies you can watch on that. So, uh, you know, we would have a movie night once a week during COVID. Two of the guys that were friends of mine during the bubble. So, you know, that's all right. So there is good, I, I, but I like I like that it's both. You know, mm-hmm. but I think there's got to be a way of sharing the wealth with everyone. Yeah, that's the problem too. Is that we're not sharing the wealth, and that has to do with uh, these large companies. But that's a whole other conversation. Yeah, yeah. Any hey, if you you ever want to talk talk a uh, 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 movie bit business side of thing things, shoot shoot me an email. Bring bring you in on Monday. We can look at box office numbers and and start start breaking th- things down and and go on the court. Disney is about that they over over writ road the rule against s- studios having their their own theaters. And Disney's already look looking at the potential of a of a Disney theater. Like I still want theater theaters to exist. Why do they, why do they really not want to, why do they not want them to have their own theater because it's an it, monopoly? It goes it, it basically goes back to uh, uh the old the, the or the old uh studios system and right. uh uh, when you could be basically the bigger the studio, and especially t- today when you look at what D- Disney has versus what, say, Sony Pictures has, uh, you could outcompete the studios based on your uh, uh, the amount of product you can p- push out versus others, and the amount of m- money one studio like a Warner Brothers can spend versus 
uh, one of I'll bring bring up because when you think think about it, what are the what are the big stu- studios now? War- Warner, D- Disney, and Sony. Because Fox, Unifox, Fox, Universal, Paramount too. Uh, and well, Fox went to D- Disney, and oh. Universal. Yep, and Universal uh, NBC. under NBC. Uh, uh, NBC Uni- uh, U- Universal again. That's a a big studio, so they could even potentially push out Sony a, a bit on the, their own. But they still don't have the the uh, size that you know. War- but everybody wants to think that Disney has pulled themselves out of all the other platforms mm-hmm. because they want their own money, which is okay. I don't know. I I, I don't know enough about it to to speak yeah. of it. But it seems like they're if they can do it why not i mean that that's fair capitalism but i just think that the, the, my, my problem is is that they're not paying everybody and it can also lead to the the comp- competitive uh issues which yeah i'm i'm a near la- laissez fair type market aren't guy but yeah competitive when you're going to the theater the amc or you something think. is you, that- you, not not re- really when I think about how uh uh, how a- AMC and and Regal have pushed out a lot of uh, local uh, th- theater owners and even oh what, I see uh, what you're saying. So then other people don't have the opportunity ex- exactly right? because they're not oh it, it's not even it, you, you're mm-hmm. not all being presented, but it isn't even it's not even nope. they you go to the the, the shows I want to see are always in the little small theaters. Yep, and that's the other 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 part of, part of that, not just Disney. Putting only Disney mo- movies in there, but being able to well, wipe out access access to smaller uh, smaller um, uh, features pr- projects not and not, not even necessarily they're not smaller. smaller. They're not smaller features. We I was gonna right, for lack of a better phrase. That, what does that mean? You know, yeah, no, no budget mad. usually. Did you see Nomad? No, I did not. Now, why didn't you see that? It won Best Picture of the Year. What would make you not want to see that? Tell me the uh it's mar- marketing. I I saw one one ad on on the internet and I can't even t- tell you wh- when I had seen seen the ad. I know the movie, I know that it's ca- coming out for uh it's on Hulu now if you want to see it. Hulu? Okay. Yeah. You should watch it with your wife because what's really it's a beautiful film and it's what it's really about it's about companies like Amazon and what happens when you have this big company in your town and that company goes under, what happens to these people? And what oh, yeah. happens when you get over a certain age? You know, what happens when you do that? Where do you go? You know, you made all this, you worked your whole life. I mean, that's what white people are mad about, really. And they thought that Trump could help them. I still don't understand that connection, you know, but because he- I didn't vote, vote for him. You can come back in if you want. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, oh, okay, okay. But I mean, that's, um, that's where, where people where a lot of white people felt that they were not being able to, they were sold this bill of goods and mm-hmm. hey, if you vote for this guy, you will be able to get a better life and you'll be able to be rich too. come to the Trump University, buy his steak and his wine and his, you know, underpants or whatever he was selling, <laughs> you know, and you will be able to be like me, but it's not true. It isn't. It, no. And it has nothing to do with that. It has to do with that the you know were like this whole the idea that people were given you know this extra money every month during COVID I think was the best thing that we could have done for America, mm-hmm. and they say well people don't want to work now they don't. yeah they're figuring out what they want to do now they have the money to go what do I want to do where do I why not we did this we did this for tax breaks for people who are rich all mm-hmm. the time and they made a, tons and tons of money. Yeah. Yeah. Hairdressers not wanting to go back because so many of them were being mistreated. Um, baristas, um, just some of the stuff service that you... industry men. Well, yeah. it's, it's, it's like yeah, it's, it's that, that kind of money. It's not even being mistreated, it, which is an important thing. What it was about mm-hmm. is that they were not their their value was not the same. Now in L.A., they, they, the minimum in West Hollywood, I think I saw in some thing, is now going up to seventeen dollars an hour, and a lot of these small businesses says they're not going to be able to you know, afford that. And I thought, well, maybe it needs to change the way everything goes down. Maybe if we, maybe tipping should stop and we should just pay someone a decent wage for working someplace. Uh, how and it is in part Europe of and most of Asia. We lived, she's lived almost nine years in Europe. I've lived almost six years in, in Europe. And, and it uh, seems like a terrible thing. The way it, yeah. It's very, very, di- once you re- realize the, the differences, because 
from from the American point point of view, you're like, well, wait, some some people can make a crap ton on on tips versus an hourly wa- wage. And Depending like, on what yeah, kind but of you don't understand that, what kind of exactly. restaurant is, what kind of food, the is, person that they so are, how they a look. Any job in some terrible fast food, mm-hmm. who wants to work? That's exactly. hard work every day. Yep. Yeah. You know, well, you I've know. seen. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, I see the people. It, it, Starbucks rushing around and mm-hmm. you know all the time. And I think this is a hard job. They should be paid yeah. a, a wage that they can live on. When did it happen when we just don't? My 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 uh, my aunt worked at McDonald's and her husband worked in the post office sorting mail, and mm-hmm. they made a living. They sent their kids to college and they both married them off and they were able to do yeah. all this. They lived in a two bedroom apartment, a small apartment, but they still had a home and were able to do all the stuff. They were able to retire and. You know, she became a teacher. The other one uh, uh, works in a, I remember very close to her, raised her kids and works in a, a clothing store. They were able to, ha- you know, do stuff with their lives. Not that, you, you, you know, uh, that means you're going to be happy or whatever, but it, it's just not fair. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, the, the, it's just not fair. The, 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 the Each job should be like this. I mean, the, the amount of money. But that's the way it is in, in the movie business right now. It's yeah. very, very black and white, you know. Yeah. It's, with, that, it's... with that said, I, 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 it's, it's getting late. But I. Oh yeah, I was gonna try, try to get, get you, get you, get going for you, for yourself as well, guys. Uh, well, Jason's... please, just, yeah, yeah. Go ahead. I, yeah. Oh. No, sorry, you sorry. Now you go ahead. <laughs> oh, okay. I was going to say, J- J- Jason Stewart, lady, ladies and gentlemen, Comedy Chateau on, on December 3rd, uh, headlining uh, the, the Desert Rose Playhouse J- January January 8th. Uh, he to- told you about all the great uh, projects. Like Hollywood and, and, and Palm Springs. Yeah. There, mm-hmm. there you go. Uh, including uh, the, the um, movies available on a- Amazon and Smothered, the s- series you, you uh, have go- going on. Was there anything else you wanted to plug or say, Jason? Just go to jasonstewart.com, S-T-U-A-R-T, Stuart, and uh, <laughs> you can hit me up. And uh, all my social media is on that page. And I so thank you guys. You're a lovely couple. Where do you live? What okay. state? Uh, but Virginia, we're, oh, we're on the yeah. mid-Atlantic coast. Oh, wow. Well, wonderful. Oh. I, I, maybe someday I'll come. I've ne- I actually have never done a show in Virginia that I think. Hey, you, you Be we... careful of the drivers. Oh, God. <laughs> oh, God. I've, dri- I've driven to L.A. I've driven to New York. I've dri- driven to Chicago. Nothing is worse than Virginia. <laughs> Anyways, Jason, thank you so so much for thank being Thank you very much. On. I hope to hear from everybody. Absolutely. Yeah, thank you. Have a good, good one, bud. Bye. Here. All right. Jason, thank you so much once again for being on the show. Ooh, ex- excuse me. Re- really do do appreciate it. It was a great great conversation. Lots of t- topics. I can't believe all the places we 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 went with that uh with that conversation, but uh always always fun. I want to do more segments like that, like yeah. guest s- segments, you know, not just a, a 10-minute I- interview, which are great Please get. We would love to help you promote whatever it is you're working on. But also, if you're interested, if you're a filmmaker, musician, cosplay, if you are involved in entertainment or geek culture somehow, some way, and you would like to do like a guest segment, you know, be on the show for 30, 40 minutes, even, you know, shorter if you if you want. Hey, come on, plug your stuff, and and then then uh, we can talk about whatever the subject matter is is for the day. Yeah. I'm I'm down. Or just trail off and talk about all sorts of stuff and have fun with that. Yeah, which which is exactly what what happened there. So, but hey, guys, it's it's a long episode all already because of that awesome uh, guest segment. So let's go ahead and do do the housekeeping. LRMonline.com every day for all your entertainment news needs and and opinions. Uh, Genreverse.com still currently goes here. We're working on. I think it was a uh, like the the con contract with our podcast distrib- distribution i don't think that's up yet so so anyways when when all that stuff's settled we're supposed to be getting our our genreverse land- landing pages and and it'll be uh really fun you guys so yeah ch- check that out um lots of cool stuff ca- coming up on the uh genreverse podcast network out now the can- cantina for for this week uh, nick and i did our hawkeye reviews uh the wheel of wheel of time our new uh the dragon review podcast for the Wheel of Time series, guys, is a really cool, cool idea. Check, check that out. Anime Versal, uh, our show is 
out of out of ske- schedule sync from what what we were at. So we might be do- doing a movie this this weekend, or uh, we'll we'll see. But so stay mm-hmm. tuned for for anime versal breaking geeks off for for the week. They'll be back ne- next week, and of course the day daily cup of genre. All of that go- goes over to our YouTube ch- channel, LRM's YouTube. YouTube channel along with all of our interviews and uh, uh, the red carpet in in person round round t- tables uh, all Zoom interviews of of course all sorts of really great great content there. Uh, Christine, anything else you needed to plug or say or anything like that? No. All right, guys. Thank you so much for jo- joining us this week. We'll see you ne- next time. Have a good one. Mm-hmm.